When I covered Justin Jefferson's record-breaking rookie season a year ago, I said that the stat line he recorded wouldn't be repeated by a rookie anytime soon. But here we are. Just a year later, Jefferson's record no longer stands thanks to his college teammate, Jamar Chase. On the surface, the numbers that Chase put up are ridiculous. His 1,455 receiving yards ranks first all-time among rookies and fourth in the NFL in 2021, his 13 recorded receiving touchdowns was good for third in the league, and his 2.51 average yards per route run ranked fifth. Based on those numbers alone, Chase makes a pretty good case for best rookie receiving season of all time. But when you look deeper into what Chase being on the field did for this Bengals offense, it's hard not to consider this to be one of, if not the most impressive rookie season in the history of the league, regardless of position. In 2020, the year before Jamar Chase was drafted, the Bengals had one of the worst deep passing attacks in the NFL. Before Joe Burrow's injury in Week 11, his deep passing numbers were abysmal. Among the 33 quarterbacks who attempted at least 25 passes of 20 or more air yards in 2020, Burrow was near the bottom of the ranks in completion percentage, yards per attempt, touchdown percentage, and passer rating. The Bengals' deep passing game was virtually non-existent in 2020, and based on what I saw on tape, it came down to a couple of major problems, one of which being their lack of a receiver who could consistently stack and win vertically. I know there are some quarterbacks out there who would have killed to throw to T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, and 32-year-old A.J. Green as a rookie, but the Bengals didn't have a receiver who Burrow could rely on to stack opposing defensive backs. Early on in Burrow's rookie season, there were a lot of plays like this one, where the receiver, who in this case is A.J. Green, wouldn't be able to stack the defensive back, meaning place himself between the defender and the end zone. T. Higgins and A.J. Green are great receivers, but neither are a threat to take the top off the defense. Cincinnati did have John Ross on the roster, who is a burner, but he missed the remainder of the 2020 season after leaving with an injury in Week 2. In terms of explosive pass plays, Burrow was forced to rely primarily on back shoulder fades, but those throws have a very low margin for error and will almost never lead to yards after the catch. Now, prior to the 2021 season, the Bengals made very few changes to their offense, in terms of both the roster and the scheme. Their personnel tendencies were pretty much the same, as were their motion, play action, and RPO tendencies. And roster-wise, the only major change was Jamar Chase replacing AJ Green. Jonah Williams was healthy for the full season, but the offensive line performance and pass protection didn't change much either. Performance-wise, however, this offense was like a new team. Burrow made massive jumps in pretty much every single meaningful quarterback stat. From yards per attempt, to completion percentage, to passer rating, he was miles ahead of where he was in his rookie season. And while some of that can be chalked up to development on Burrow's part, a lot of it had to do with the astronomical jump in Cincinnati's performance in the deep passing game. Upon Jamar Chase's arrival in Cincinnati, the Bengals' explosive pass game, well, exploded. Burrow's completion percentage and passer rating on throws of 20 or more air yards doubled, his yards per attempt increased by nearly 10 yards, he jumped from dead last to second in touchdown percentage, and the Bengals' explosive pass rate jumped from 5.6% to 10.2%. All else relatively equal, Jamar Chase took this offense's explosive pass game from the bottom of the league to the top as a rookie. And when you turn on the tape, you can see why. First, I want to show you this play from Week 3 against Pittsburgh. Cincinnati called one of their favorite concepts called 989, which is pretty self-explanatory. The number one receivers on the outside will run go or nine routes, while the slot receiver will run a post or eight route. The goal here is to create one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, and Pittsburgh's cover one call makes that possible. Post-snap, Burrow identified the one-on-one -on -one matchup and made a perfect throw to chase over the top, but I really want to highlight what this looked like as Burrow let go of the ball. Pittsburgh sent five at the quarterback, so Burrow had to get rid of this ball relatively quickly, and he did in under two and a half seconds. At that point in the play, Chase was still a good two yards from a stacked position in relation to the opposing defensive back but Burrow threw it anyway. That's what faith in your receiver looks like. Faith that Chase earned through reps upon reps with his quarterback going back to their days in Baton Rouge. So as much as Burrow's difficulty as a deep passer had to do with his receiver's inability to stack opposing defensive backs, it had to do with his lack of faith in them to do so. Burrow trusted Chase from the moment they stepped on the field together in Cincinnati, and that led to lots and lots of touchdowns. Now, the other thing I wanna highlight here is the fact that this pass only traveled 34 yards. That's not a lot of space for a receiver to stack, especially considering the five-yard cushion that Steelers cornerback James Pierre had prior to the snap. 
Chase's ability to stack in such a small amount of space was extremely valuable to the Bengals' offense last season because their offensive line play didn't allow for long developing routes. Chase had to stack and stack early because Burrow had to get rid of the ball before the pass rush closed in. Even here, you can see Cam Hayward was right there as Burrow let go of this ball, and this wasn't even two and a half seconds into the play. The Bengals had so much success with this 989 concept because even if you know exactly what's coming as a defense, there isn't much you can do when a receiver wins one-on-one -on -one so consistently. Chase's positioning in relation to the defensive back two seconds into the down didn't even matter. Burrow was throwing the ball because he simply expected Chase to stack, and more often than not, he did. Now, Chase is stupid fast, faster than the vast majority of NFL defensive backs, which is part of the reason why he can stack so consistently. But in the NFL, there's always someone faster. In week 5, for example, Chase went up against Eric Stokes, who ran a 4-2-4-40 at his pro day. And in that game, Chase made two catches on back shoulder fades. Whether it's by stacking or by making an adjustment, Chase is already one of the best in the entire NFL at winning at the catch point. His ability to contort his body into pirouette-style catches is just as important as his downhill speed, because sometimes there won't be a man to beat one-on-one. -on -one. On this play from week 16 against the Ravens, Baltimore called cover 2, which tells the outside corners to sit in the flats while the deep safeties drop into deep halves. And this requires receivers to alter their vertical routes. As the ball is snapped, Chase immediately recognizes this as cover 2 by the corner's technique. As soon as he sees the corner sit in the flat, he knows that he needs to avoid contact to stay within rhythm, so he shows the corner his number and looks for the ball. As he's tracking, he sees the safety closing in for a big hit, so to protect the ball, he turns his back to the field gets his feet in, and survives the contact on the sideline. His ability to stack, combined with his ability to contort his body, make Chase exactly what the Bengals' offense needed to consistently put points on the board. But his connection with Joe Burrow is arguably just as important as any other trait that Chase brings to the table. When Burrow and Chase were dominating SEC football in 2019, their connection outside of structure was second to none. On plays where he held the ball for over two and a half seconds, Burrow ranked first among FBS quarterbacks in yards per attempt, completion percentage, and passer rating. But like his production on deep passes, Burrow's production on off-script plays fell off a cliff when he got to the NFL. In 2020, he ranked in the bottom 10 among starting quarterbacks in all of the aforementioned stat categories, but in 2021, he was back to putting up ridiculous numbers outside of offensive structure. I mean, there was a play from back in week 14 against San Francisco where Burrow had to abandon structure, and when he let go of the ball as he was rolling out to his right, Chase was running toward the opposite sideline but was still able to turn around and make the catch inbounds. This type of off-script play is only possible when the quarterback and the receiver are on the exact same page, and that's the type of connection that Chase and Burrow have. Now, the Bengals' offense will look different in 2022. It's almost inevitable that they're gonna face more too high safety coverage shells because that's that's how NFL defenses are slowing down these explosive passing offenses like that of Kansas City and Buffalo. Cincinnati is next, and they know it. Joe Burrow even said that they're preparing to see more too high shells next season in a recent press conference, and that means less one-on-one -on -one matchups for these receivers. It'll take some time for this offense to adjust to the way defenses are playing them just like it did for the Chiefs and for the Bills, but I'm not worried about what that means for Jamar Chase. In fact, I'm excited to see how Cincinnati's coaches use his skill set because as great as he is as a vertical threat, Chase is just as good after the catch. Cincinnati used Chase on a fair amount of screen passes last season, and this play from Week 17 against Kansas City is a good example of why they did. Chase is aligned to the bottom of your screen, and Cincinnati called a tunnel screen, which tells the receiver to come back to the ball as the blockers get out in front of him. Now, when Chase gets this ball, he has nowhere to go. If he hits this downhill immediately, he gets maybe 5 yards. So instead, he takes a step back and patiently waits for the blocks to develop in front of him, which leads to a gain of 10 yards. Among receivers who were targeted at least 50 times last year, Chase ranked 4th in yards after catch per reception with 8.1, and was 2nd to only Debo Samuel in yards after the catch per reception above expectation per next-gen stats. There were very few, if any, pass catchers who were better than Chase at creating yards after the catch, and that will be an extremely valuable asset when defenses go with more conservative soft zone coverage from two high safety shells in 2022. No matter what defenses do next year though, it's not going to stop Chase. The only thing that slowed him down last year was his own hands, but assuming he can fix some of those concentration drops, he's heading into year two as one of the most complete weapons in the NFL. The Bengals might have it a little tougher next year because of a harder schedule and a 
a season of film for opponents to study, but as long as Burrow and Chase are in Cincinnati, defenses will fear the Bengals. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon and Twitter at the links in the description. But that's all I've got for now, so until next time, peace.